Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up because today's episode is not your average stroll down memory lane. We're diving headfirst into the adrenaline-fueled world of game shows where the stakes are high, the questions are tough, and the competition is fierce. This is The Ryan Files, and I'm your host, Ryan Pelton, the man who's been mistaken for everyone from Elvis Presley to The Weakest Link. Are you not curious? Curious? Who is this man? Who is this man? This enigma. Yes, a man of many talents, but he is a glitch in the system. He spends his nights scouring texts for traces of lost knowledge. Knowledge. We dare not stand by and turn a blind eye to this man speaking on a public forum. It is all in the fire. I present to you on this day the Ryan, the Ryan Files. Now, before we unravel the tale of my stint on The Weakest Link, do me a solid. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss a second of the excitement coming your way. All right, now picture this. It's 2002, and I'm holding down the Ford at Legends Inn concert in Branson, Missouri, when an email drops into my inbox. The producers of The Weakest Link want yours truly to step into the spotlight. Cue the excitement, the nerves, and a shout out to Jeannie Horton, general manager of Legends in Concert in Branson back then and still today. She's the unsung hero of this adventure, folks. She gave me the green light to be able to take a break from my Elvis duties in Branson and fly out to Burbank, California. But hey, I couldn't just show up and hope for the best. I had one week to go from zero to game show hero. So, I did what any self-respecting contender would do, folks. I bought the Weakest Link PC game and dove into a week-long training montage. Quick side note, folks. I never won a single round in the digital realm. But, as they say, practice makes perfect, or at least not embarrassingly bad. Fast forward to the big day. I fly out to Burbank, California, check into the hotel, and try to get some shut-eye. Spoiler alert, nerves are real and sleep is a luxury, but I woke up on game day and a strange calm washed over me, a premonition perhaps that today was gonna be my day to shine. Now the stage is set. 20 Elvis tribute artists are vying for the spotlight, one of the eight spots on the show. And when my name gets the nod, the conviction that I'm destined to win grows even stronger. But wait, there's a strategy meeting before the storm hits and it's time for me to drop some truth bombs. Now let me break down the weakest link for you. It's a battlefield of trivia where contestants strive to build a money pot by answering consecutive questions correctly. But there's a catch. You can cash the money out that you've won so far at any moment by yelling bank. And trust me, timing on this is everything. Like a true geek, I did my homework, folks. The average winnings were peanuts compared to the potential jackpot. A contestant could theoretically win a million dollars on an episode, but the prize is usually less than $20,000. Why? Well, pride, greed, and intimidation are the invisible foes in this game. So I laid out a plan to my teammates. I said, listen, if we hit five grand or 10 grand, bank it. And if we're below 20,000 after the first round, well, vote me off. I mean, someone's gonna win. We might as well make it the most money we possibly can. So there I am, surrounded by the suspenseful aura of the studio, an aggressive, sharp-tongued British host, and an audience dressed all in black. I even missed my first question, I was so nervous. It was about a movie I'd just seen two weeks earlier. I knew it, but I missed it because of nerves. But hey, no time to dwell on that. The game is on and it was time to play The Weakest Link. So grab that pen and paper, folks. The challenge is real and I invite each and every one of you to join me on this wild ride. Can you beat me or will you become the weakest link. Let's dive in together and find out. Pat Hemingway was from Las Vegas, Nevada, one of the flying Elvises. Now he was also a mechanical and electrical engineer for Lockheed Martin. I knew that he was gonna be competition. 
There I am, Ryan Pelton from Columbus, Ohio, 29 years old. I was curious about my position in the chain of contestants, but I think it did help me to bank more money, especially later on in the game. Bill Kelly is from Lexington, Kentucky, very nice guy. And he is the contestant who got voted off way too early. We'll talk about that more later. Johnny Thompson from Las Vegas, Nevada. Now I knew Johnny and had worked with him before. I knew he was a street smart kind of guy. I didn't know his trivia acumen. Turns out Johnny was very good. Elvez from Los Angeles, California, the Mexican Elvis translator, as he says. I immediately pegged Elvez as someone to look out for. Very charismatic, and if he was just as smart as he was charismatic, well, he would be a big factor in manipulating who got voted off the show. Robert Washington from Auburn, Maine. Like Johnny, I knew Robert and had worked with him in the past. And to this day, Robert is someone I love and I really enjoy working with. Michael Roten, he's from Fort Worth, Texas. Michael immediately hit me as a strong competitor and someone I'd have to keep an eye on. Ironically enough, just a few weeks ago, Michael came out to the show, got a chance to say hello and relive some of those memories. Jim LaBeouf from Las Vegas. I got the least amount of read off of Jim. He was relatively quiet and I didn't know what to expect out of him. I just figured, well, we'll see what happens during the game. All right, round one, here we go. What movie tells the story of John Nash, a mentally ill math genius? A Good Summer. I was with Russell Crowe. I saw that movie two weeks prior to the show. Knew the answer, just was nervous. At this point, I was glad to see that some other people were missing some questions. What California border lake is named for an Indian word meaning big water? Uh, Tahoe. That was not a problem question at all. Knew that one right away. Got one under the under my belt. Felt good about it. In the US, what medical professional can legally prescribe drugs, a psychiatrist or a psychologist? Psychiatrist. Once again, a question I knew, uh, just had to make the right answer. So, and as you can see, we're already at $22,500 bank in the first round. So what I said is coming true. And there you go. Stats for the first round. And Robert gets voted off. One for three, understandable. It was sad to see Robert go, but it's all part of the game. Round two, here we go. Which U.S. presidential monument is 555 feet tall? The Washington Monument. All right, easy peasy, off and running. Started to feel my confidence a little bit, especially after not getting voted off the first round and making that $27,500 was big. What is 14 times two? Twenty-eight. Obviously a softball of a question. No problem there. As you notice, Bill continually is doing well. We were tied at this point. What national restaurant chain uses the ad jingle, I want my baby back ribs? Chili's. They were running that commercial all the time back then. Pretty easy. Bill banking in there too, getting a little money. Look at that, $50,000 for the round. 
pretty awesome round, man. We're up to $77,500 after two rounds. That's amazing. Now here, it gets a little crazy. Bill gets voted off. That is sad. Look at Bill, he only missed one question, 83%, which comes into play later on. And Bill also banked a decent amount of money. So uh, it was sad to see, but it is what it is. Round three, here we go. Starting out with Elvez, who was the strongest link. Two quick misses, three quick misses. Gary Player was a Grand Slam champion in what sport? Golf. Of course, being a golfer, that was easy. Rare miss by Johnny. Ooh, Jim, 0 for 2. What brand of cake mix includes varieties called Chocolate Lovers and Moist Deluxe? Duncan Hines. That was a guess. I had no clue. It was the only company that came to mind. Ah, uh, Jim, 0 for 3. It's pretty obvious at this point. What Kevin Smith movie deals with the day in the life of a convenience store employee? Clerks. I'd never seen the movie, heard about it, knew what it was about. That was a guess, but pretty educated guess. So yeah, interesting that round. Pat missed two, Johnny missed one, um, but Jim over three. You know, that was a pretty easy call to vote off Jim. And also, if you notice, Jim had not banked any money during his time on the show. So, All right, round four, here we go. Archie Griffin is the only two-time winner of what National College Football Award? Heisman Trophy. That's right, Archie Griffin from the great Ohio State University. What punctuation mark is used in a contraction to replace a missing letter? Apostrophe. Pretty easy question and good to get on the board after uh, the third round, banking no money. Wanted to get a bank in there as soon as possible. Helps remind the other guys too, maybe to bank some money. Elvez, 0 for 2, that's not good. What long distance phone company uses the number 1-800 pin drop? Sprint. Of course, those commercials back in the day were around um, Sprint currently no longer a long distance phone company but a cellular phone company what US state is home to Grand Teton National Park Montana I did not know the answer to that I know the area of the country it was in but um, had not really been out there up until that point in my life. So later years, years later, uh, of course, I spent a lot of time out there. So I know that now just didn't have the life experience to know it back then. So, and of course, Elvez gets voted off kind of a shame. Uh, he was worrisome. He could answer some things, but he also was good at banking. Um, so it's unfortunate to see him go, but he was also competition and, um, I guess it was probably more of a relief to see him go, because um, he's definitely a good competitor in the show, no doubt about it. All right, round five, here we go. $84,500 in the bank. 
which Shakespearean play is about a woman named Catherine and her horrible temper? Taming of the Shrew. Big Shakespeare fan, read all the all the plays, so not a, not a hard question. FDR created the March of Dimes to conquer what childhood disease? Polio. I didn't actually know that. I knew FDR had polio, so that was a logical guess. Good bank there for $25,000, though. Who played Elvis in the TV movie directed by John Carpenter? Kurt Russell. It would have been embarrassing to miss that question, no doubt about it. Alright, so $31,000 that round, getting the bank back up, that was good, um, and of course, it's a hard decision. You look at the stats, obviously it was Michael, but it was sad to see Michael go, and I feel bad about the way I was asked about it, and you know, what I said, I didn't mean it to sound the way it sounded, but I apologize publicly, Michael, um, yeah, yeah, I just, someone had to go, it was unfortunate it was him because he was a good player and he banked a lot. You can see that he banked four times, so. Round six. What film composer wrote the pop hit, Short People? Michelangelo. Now, I knew it was the same guy from Toy Story. I just couldn't think of his name. And I just threw that answer out there because I had no, I couldn't remember it. I knew it, but couldn't remember it. What feature length cartoon won an Oscar for the song, Under the Sea? Little Mermaid. And I knew that one very well, but I had to think about it for a second. I was getting a, in my own head a little bit, a little nervous. Take a deep breath, here we go. What Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover model is nicknamed, The Body? Al McPherson. That was a total guess. Total guess. The U is a specific term for the female of what mammal? Sheep. Was a pretty easy one, although it was weird hearing Ann Robinson pronounce you in her British accent. So here we are. Now, this is a kind of a funny story. Um, Pat voted for me, I voted for Johnny, Johnny voted for Pat, but because I was the strongest link, I got to decide between Johnny and Pat. I changed my vote to Pat because I think Pat was probably, I knew that he was a you know guy from Lockheed Martin, a mechanical and electrical engineer, and decided to vote Pat off. Um, it ended up working out in the end. I didn't realize it at the time, but if you look, Pat, you know, yeah, 15 for 19 wasn't too, so bad, but he did not bank once. So that's very unfortunate. All right, round seven is a bonus round. No one gets voted off. Just trying to make money. How many total years are there in a quarter of a century? Twenty-five. Yeah, easy question. What brand of soda is mixed with Seagram's whiskey to make the cocktail known as a 7 and 7? 7 Up. I don't drink uh, mixed drinks or hard liquor, but that was kind of just simple logic. In World War I, Ernest Hemingway drove an ambulance for what humanitarian organization? Red Cross. 
I didn't really know the answer to that, um, but it was a logical guess. So, and you can see I banked ten thousand dollars, doubles for twenty. What actress played the role of Jamie Buckman on the TV series Mad About You? Helen Hunt. I knew that one, but again, just nerves, and it I couldn't bring it to the to my tip of my tongue. The book, Word Freak, highlights the history and culture surrounding what has bro board game. Uh, the Scrabble. So there you go. Uh, another answer I totally knew. Um, just nerves. So I went five for five, and um, you know, you can see Johnny and I are pretty close, just two, two questions difference. Um, $137,500 is the total amount that was going to be won. It was time to go head to head for the final round. So after round seven, I just had a little conversation with myself. I said, you need to calm down. You're almost missing questions that you know the answer to. Just calm down, breathe and relax. You know, in your gut, you're going to win. And it really helped me calm down. So I had a feeling of peace, which, uh, is illustrated by the music for the final round. Final round, here we go. In opera, what is the musical tone for the lowest natural male voice? Knew this one off the bat. Bass. In the US, what unit of liquid measurement is equal to 32 fluid ounces? I knew this one off the bat too. Half a quart. Felt bad for that answer. <laughs> what beach resort city in southern Mexico is named in the title of an Elvis Presley film? Acapulco. Fun in Acapulco. Pretty easy. Comedian has hosted Saturday Night Live the most times. Big Saturday Night Live fan, knew this one. Chevy Chase. So I was feeling good about myself at this point. What term for an illogical rule or situation comes from the title of a Joseph Heller novel? If I would have thought this through, I would have got it, but. Snafu. It's funny I said snafu on public television. Elvis Presley was married at what Las Vegas hotel? The Aladdin. Pretty easy question. In the US, which of the four seasons has only one federal holiday? I really should have thought this through. I can't believe I missed it. Summer. song from the Rocky Horror Picture Show gives instructions to a dance of the same name. I don't know that I would have got this. Time Warp. Never saw the movie, so. What independent automaker was arrested in Los Angeles by the FBI in 1982? Knew it immediately, but just had to think, was it anyone else? DeLorean. Big sigh of relief there for me. All the pressure on Johnny. What corrugated steel huts, used as housing in World War II, were named for a Rhode Island town? I knew this one, but I didn't realize how it was spelled. I have to say barracks. So there you go. Rough on Johnny, rough way to, to lose $137,500, but there's only one winner. So that was the game winnings, $137,500, third largest total won in the US version of the game. Took about eight hours to uh, shoot the entire episode. Um, you can see the total correct answers. Uh, I was 25 of 30. That was uh, the most correct answers, highest percentage. Tied with Bill. Like I said before, Bill left way too soon. It would have been neat to see uh, what Bill would have done had he been part of the team longer. Of course, the field, 71%. But 83% for me, not that great. I mean, if I would have brought home an 83% on a test as a kid, I probably would have got grounded. Um, and as, far, as far as the banked money goes, uh, 
You know, I had the most number of times banking and the most money banked. Interesting that Pat, who made it to the top three, uh, did not bank once. And we already mentioned that, as well as Jim not banking. Um, but you look at like Bill, only one bank, but it was $10,000. Robert, first guy off, but he banked $10,000. Um, and then Michael, four times $33,500. It would have been great to have Michael um, in a little bit longer as well, just because um, it would have elevated the pot. So uh, very interesting stat lines and uh, what an awesome, awesome experience and uh, reliving it was certainly a blessing. So how did you do? Were you able to keep up? Let me know how you fared in the comments. Hey folks, thank you for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. And of course, at the end of this video, you will have another chance to subscribe to this channel. Those subscriptions mean everything. Hey, on a final note, this is the last episode for November, 2023. And by the end of this video, you will be informed on how to deliver your answer to the monthly puzzle. And remember, the winner this month will not only get lifelong 00 agent status to the Ryan files, but they will also be receiving a brand new scroll saw, a shout out to episode three. You folks are all amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in this week. I look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday night as we start a new puzzle and continue the journey here at the Ryan Files. No Ryan, no Ryan Files.